Alhamdulillah La ilaha illallah Wa da'u la shirika lahu I bear witness that there is no God but God And no partner has he I greet everybody with the universal greetings of Assalamu alaikum Inshallah The title of the sermon is called Submission Changes You and Accepts You I'm going to say that again Submission Changes You and Accepts You and God willing, I'm going to read some ayahs from the Quran. And I'm asking God to choose the message that He wants us to receive. My Lord, I seek refuge in you from the suggestion of the devil. So, my Lord, I seek refuge in you instead of coming in me. I'm going to read from 20. No, excuse me. I'm Surah 22. Ayat 26. We appointed Abraham to establish the shrine. You should not idolize any other God besides me. And purify my shrine for those who visit it. Those who live near it and those who bow and prostrate. Yes, and proclaim that the people shall observe Hajj pilgrimage. They will come to you walking or riding on various exhausted means of transportation. They will come from the furthest locations. They may seek commercial benefits and they shall commemorate God's name during specific days for, for, for providing them with livestock eat therefrom and feed the despondent and the poor. They shall complete their obligations, fulfill their vows, and visit the ancient shrine. Those who reverence the rites decreed by God have deserved a good reward at their Lord. Y'all hear that? All livestock is made lawful for your food except for those specifically prohibited for you. You shall avoid the abomination of idol worship and avoid bearing false witness. You shall maintain your devotion absolutely to God alone. Y'all hear that? God is telling us to maintain our devotion to Him alone. Do not devote yourself to any other person or thing, but devote yourself to God. Right? God tells us this, right? Why would God say that to us? To keep us out of trouble. To keep you from getting hurt. To keep you from becoming confused because you devoted all your time and efforts and energy to something that may have let you down. But God will never let you down, right? So that's why God says you shall maintain. When you maintain something, right, that means you have to put in some work, right, to maintain it. You can do it all day, all year, but you have to maintain it. That means you got to build it, keep it strong, because it's going to keep you strong. Right? Everything we do, we get a benefit from it. It builds us. Okay? Anyone who sets up any idol besides God is like one who fell from the sky. They get snatched up by vultures or blown away by the wind in a deep ravine. Indeed, those who those who reverence the rights decreed by God demonstrates the righteousness of their hearts. So God is saying, work on your heart. Right? Build your heart. Because I'm looking at your heart. Right? I'm looking at you, but I'm looking inside of you. Right? You see the analogy? Where is our heart? It's inside. Right? So God is checking out our insides all the time. 
And guess what? You better check in your insides all the time too to make sure that you are together. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. Just bear with me. As I go into that place, that zone. Okay. The livestock provides you with many benefits for a period before being donated to the ancient shrine. For each congregation, we have decreed rites whereby they commemorate the name of God for, for, for providing them with the livestock. Your God is one and the same God. You shall all submit to him, give good news to the obedient. They are the ones whose heart tremble upon mentioning God. They steadfastly persevere doing adversity. They observe the contact prayers, salat, and from our provisions to them, they give the charity. The animal offerings are among the rites decreed by God. For your own good, you shall mention God's name on them while you are standing in line. Once they are offered for sacrifice, you should eat therefrom and feed the poor and the needy. This is why we subdued them for you, that you may show your appreciation. Neither, the, neither their meat nor their blood reaches God. What reaches him is your righteousness. He has subdued them for you, that you may show your appreciation by glorifying God for guiding you. Yes. Give, yes. give good news to the charitable. Mm -hmm. So God is telling us we shall always glorify him for guiding us. Right? Because if you ain't guided by God, you in trouble. We all in trouble. Right? And some of us have came from places where we were not following the guidance of God. And we was catching hell. Right? Right? If we study where we came from and where we are now, like I said in the last sermon, we're in a much better place. Sure. And it feels so good to be in this place of peace and contentment and tranquility. Yes, sir. Don't it feel good? Sure. Right? Yes. All our needs are met. All the provisions are given. Right? And we are still in the race. Right? That's right. Submission changes you. Right? And accepts you. Yes, sir. Because you can come from the darkest place. Right? And if you sincerely say, man, I'm going to change myself. I'm going to change my life. Right? Right? Mm -hmm. Then God will work with you. Because he knows you. And God's mercy predominates his wrath. Right? Yes. That's why he gave us the path. Right? Right? God will work with us. That's right. He'll take nothing and make it something. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. That's why we got to remember where we came from. The biggest problem of mankind is that they, we, us, forget where we came from. When those oceans and rivers were rough. And we thought we was going to drown, right? And some of us was drowning. And God threw the life raft to us, right? Yes, Look at us here, right? Look at us here. We all have an individual journey, yes. right? You know where you came from. I know where I came from. We know where we came from, right? We know. So God be glorified that he has blessed us. Given us the greatest gift. So as we live life, we can feel life, love life, embrace life, because life will love and embrace us back. And so will death. That's right. Even the death. We'll 
embrace you and love you. You know why? Because God says in the book, when the angels come, some of the souls are going to be gently drawn out, right? That's love. Okay? And then some of the souls are going to be forcibly taken out, right? You see that? So submission changes you and accepts you. I don't care what color you are, white, black, Chinese, whatever color you are, if you let go of that stuff, we all got some stuff. Everybody got that stuff, right? The prejudices, the insecurities, all this stuff we got, right? Right, we got that. And when we do certain things in this path, we shed it, and God removes it. And God will show you who you really are. You'll see yourself for who you really are, and your heart will be humbled. That's right. You won't be boastful and proud no more. You'll understand God's plan. And that will always keep you in a state of humility at all given times, even when you're angry. You will lower your wing. That's the beauty of submission. It will change you. And as it changes you, you change you. Because you got the tools to change you. And then you can help maybe Help some other people change if they want to change, right? If they're not caught up in the old way, right? My way or the highway. You know, remember that saying? Get it my way or the highway. Get the door my way or we don't get it done. Right? We don't want to be stuck. Do we want to be stuck, people? No, no, no. Okay. No. We're going to always be evolving, right? Yes, sir. Okay, because last week I spoke about how God says that the planets are in their own orbit. And our system, our heart, lungs, kidneys, and stuff, is in its own orbit too. Absolutely. Continuously moving. And when it stops moving, I guess the, um, what, the post is taken, right? Flatline. <laughs> okay? So submission changes you and accepts you. Okay? Just bear with me. Okay, I'm at 38. God defends those who believe. God does not love any betrayer unappreciative. Any betrayer or unappreciative. God says he don't love that. So we got to always check ourselves that we're not doing that. That we're not betraying each other. That we're not betraying ourselves. That we're not unappreciative. That we're not always complaining about, I ain't got this, I need to do that, and all that old stuff. You understand that, people? We got so much. And sometimes we get so comfortable with what we got, we become unappreciative. Until we lose it, then we wish we had it back. Permission is granted to those who are being persecuted since injustice has befallen them and God is certainly able to support them. They were evicted from their homes unjustly for no reason other than saying our Lord is God. If it were not for God's supporting of some people against others, monasteries, churches, synagogues, and mass gyms where the name of God is commemorated frequently would have been destroyed. Absolutely, God supports those who support him. God is powerful or mighty. So I just go to, to, um, to say that we need to give our all in all to the creator. When, when we begin to, well, listen, this is what God says. God says when we give our all in all to him, he's going to look out for us. Okay, we're going to be all right. It's going to be all right because we're giving our all in all to God first and foremost. And then we let everything else trickle down to everybody else because we know that God is the highest of our high. Right? God is our highest aim. Right? Because 
when we deal with the earthly people and the earthly pleasures and stuff like that, sometimes things go kind of awry, right? Right? But not with God. Right? If we look at how good God has been to us, God always has blessed us. Even when we were wrong, we still got blessed. Right? Still get the reward of our Lord. Even when you are straight. But you're not going to get the big payoff. You'll get a little smidgen just to sustain you. So you can come back to God. And lock into God. Right? And get right with God. Right? Right? You're going to always get those chances. The chance. So if you missed out before, you got another chance. Because you're breathing. We're breathing. So we always got another chance if we wake up and we're breathing. You got to work with what you have in your hand. That's what we have to do. Right? We got the book. The final testament. It's, it, it's proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that it's from the creator. Right? So if we believe that, why are we worried about everything else? You know why? Because of fear. Because we're still going through the cleansing process. Some of that stuff, that baggage, is still with us. And we have to recognize that in order to get it off us. We have to. And we use God's prescription, I'm going to call it. Yeah, the prescription that the Creator has given us. Check this out. They are those who, if we appointed them as rulers on earth, they would establish the contact prayers. We have been appointed rulers in earth. Because we're establishing the contact prayers, right? People think a ruler, somebody got to have a crown and a king and all that illusion. Of, no, 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 no. A ruler is someone that's striving to live a righteous, just life. You understand that? Ain't about your crown and your big throne. Your crown and your throne is your mind. This is, this is the throne. This is the crown the mind. And if you want to take it a little bit deeper, this is your shrine. Because you're continuously storing memory from years and years and years and years and years gone by. God be glorified. They would establish the contact prayers in the obligatory charity and would advocate righteousness and forbid evil. God is the ultimate ruler. If they reject you, listen to this, people. The people of Noah, Ad, and Thamu have also disbelieved before them. Also the people of Abraham and the people of Lot and the dwellers of Midian. Moses was also rejected. God is telling us that when you feel you are being rejected, it's nothing new under the sun. Because he points out those who were here before you, they were rejected also by even their own folks. But they held on to the Creator. And God saw them through. And he raised them up. Right? So if you ever felt some kind of rejection because of a feeling, emotion, or situation, just know that that rejection is nothing new. Don't let it overwhelm you anymore if that is your case and situation. Don't let rejection get the best of you. Because if you're holding on to the rope, of the Creator, God gonna pull you up, continue to pull you up, and pull you up, and pull you up, and pull you up, always. Mm -hmm. 
I led all these people on, then I called them to account. How devastating was my requital? Many a community have we annihilated because of their wickedness, excuse me, wickedness. They ended up with ruined steel wells and great empty mansions. Did they not roam the earth, then use their minds to understand and use their ears to hear? Indeed, the real blindness is not the blindness of the eyes, but the blindness of the hearts inside of the chest. So you can see and hear all you want. If your heart ain't right, you ain't right. And this is what God is telling us. If my heart is not right, if my heart is not in the right place, I am not right with God and I'm not going to be right with people. Do y'all hear what I'm saying here? Because God looks at what? Not your outside, how good you look and this and that. He looks inside of us. The real person, right? Because you can't see my insides, and I can't see yours, right? But just imagine if we could, boy, this place would probably be torn up. Or just imagine if everybody in the world could see each other true inside, how you really feel inside. Oof. It'll be blood in the streets, right? Yeah. Not trying to make it a negative sermon. <laughs> no. no. But it's going to show. Submission changes you yes. and accepts you. Oh, yes. And, and you know, before we um, repent, and then knowing that, you know, because, listen, the way that things are going on now, I'm talking about in high places, low places, and in between, right? Right? or hell is breaking loose. Mm -hmm. But you see how peaceful it is in here amongst us, right? Right? You see how peaceful God has allowed us, right, to receive some kind of peace, right? Yes. So it may have been outside that door, whatever it was, but we in here, right? And we can just take a little breather and have some peace and say, you know what, I can do it again. I can get back on the horse, right? And ride out in the sunset. Right? With a smile and knowing that God has blessed me. God has always blessed us and pulled us through. But we have to pull us through. That's why we cannot give up on ourselves. People are going to give up on you. But you cannot give up on you. Because at the end of the day, all you got is you and God. That's all you got. And if you don't believe that, go look at the obituary column today. A lot of folks done left here. Right? Right? Like I said, I may mention before, death is the great equalizer. Right? And death, if you reflect on it, will keep you humble. Yeah, because the illusion is, oh, I'm going to live forever. I'm going to have this forever. Right? Inshallah, let us repent. sermon is submission changes you and accepts you. So when nobody else don't accept you, mm -hmm. right, know that God accepts you, right, and that God got you, got all of us, right. When our kids don't want to act right, mm -hmm. when our relatives don't want to act right, 
when the people at the job don't want to act right, when you're walking, somebody bump into you, don't say excuse me, don't want to act right, when you're driving and that person cuts you off and don't want to act right, and when you sometimes don't want to act right within yourself, we have to turn to the Creator so that we can stay in the posture of humility and peace. Because there's so much coming. And I'm going I'm, I'm to say this. It seems like the heart I'm trying to be righteous and right and correct, it seems like the more that keeps coming, harder and harder and harder and harder. So don't think because you making salat and you doing Ramadan and you reading Quran and you saying assalamu alaikum and wa alaikum my salam that you're going to have always a good day. <laughs> you're going to be tested. And when the test comes, you remember God, you say, you know what? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I'm not doing it. Because when you feel that peace and that contentment, it's precious. Yes. Very precious. To just sit within yourself, by yourself, or even if you're amongst a group of people, and just be so at peace within yourself. That's sacred. That's sacred. Sacred. God be glorified. The small beautiful things that we all got have been given. Some of us lost stuff. God gave us bigger and better stuff. Woo! Right? If you look at some of the things we lost and thought, oh my God, what I'm going to do? Right? Right? And you went into the posture of humility. Right? You say, you know what? This is out of my control. This is out of my hand. I'm going to rely on my Lord. And God says when you do that, all that other stuff will no longer affect you. It will no longer bother you. That's what God says in the book. The, look, this book, God tells us, is what? It's a healing and mercy forever ails us. Right? I'm not saying that. That's what God says. That's why it's vitally important to read this book. I can say I'm a submitter all day long. I can say that, but I got to check into the guidance because it checks me when I uncheck myself. You understand what I'm saying? Because this ain't about being a holy roly. This ain't about being a guru. This ain't about thinking you better than. No, 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 no. We're all striving in this process because we all are criminals. All of us are criminals. And you know why, right? Because what? We associated others with God, right? And we didn't think that God could do it all. So God said, get ye down from here, right? But he didn't leave us, right, without a directional compass, right? Because he said if a messenger comes with the guidance, he who follows it, right? We, right, they're going to be okay, right? Okay? So there's always hope for us. And the reason why I'm saying this is because we have made mistakes. We're going to make mistakes. And it's a continuous process. But the gift of that is seeing yourself when you make a mistake and striving to correct that mistake. Yes. That's the blessing. Yeah. That's when you know you're striving to be righteous. Because you're putting all that stuff to the side and you say, you know what? Let me man up. Let me woman up. If I'm wrong, let me man up. Let me woman up. Right? Because I want to secure the peace of my Lord. Because God ain't going to bless you. Right? If you ain't trying to bless others with the goodness from your heart. Right? Right? Touch your heart. Right? And why did the servant now? They challenge you to bring retribution and God never fails to fulfill his prophecy. 
A day of your Lord is like a thousand of your years. Wow. So God just told us something. He said a day of your Lord is like a thousand of your years. So one of our days with God is like a thousand years. Am I correct here or am I misreading this here? Right? Do you see that? Yes. Wow! A day of your Lord is like a thousand of your years. Ooh, that's a beautiful day, isn't it? A thousand of our years, a day at our Lord. Just imagine we're going to be a thousand down here. Hmm. Many a community in the past committed evil, and I led them on for a while, then I punished them. To me is the ultimate destiny. Say, oh people, I have been sent to you as a profound warner. Those who believe and lead a righteous life have deserved forgiveness and a generous recompense. As for those who strive to challenge our revelations, they incur hell. Mm -hmm. We did not send before you any messenger or any prophet without having the devil interfere in his wishes. God then nullifies what the devil has done. God perfects his revelations. God is omniscient most wise. He does set up the devil's scheme as a test for those who harbor doubts in their hearts. And those whose hearts are hardened. Ooh. I don't want my heart to be hardened. I, I, no, 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 no. <laughs> and I'm going to say this. I strongly believe because our hearts have not hardened. That's why God allowed us to get submission, to get this message here. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm sharing from my experience. Because you got to look at your experience. Because I know my experience. I know my experience. So, thank God, our hearts, if they were hardened, they're no longer hardened. That's another blessing and a gift from our Creator. Just bear with me, because I'm going to wind it down. The wicked must remain with the opposition. Those who are blessed with knowledge will recognize the truth from your Lord. Oh, man. We are blessed with knowledge. You see that? will recognize the truth from your Lord, then believe in it, and their hearts will readily accept it. Most assuredly, God guides the believers in the right path. As for those who disbelieve, they will continue to harbor doubts until the hour comes to them suddenly, or until the retribution of a terrible day comes to them. All sovereignty on that day belongs to God, and he will judge among them. As for those who believe and lead a righteous life, they deserve the gardens of bliss. You're going to get that bliss here, too. You're going to get it here, too, as I've made mention in other sermons. You're going to feel the bliss, the peace, the contentment, the sakina, the peace and reassurance of your Lord while you're living. And that's going to be the confirmation that what it is that we're doing is the real thing. Because it... Because if you don't feel something out of what we do, and you're not going to want to do it. If you don't feel your salat, you're not going to want to make five prayers a day. If you don't feel some kind of understanding when you pick up the book, you're not going to want to pick up the book. If you're not feeling Ramadan, you're not going to fast. It is what it is. And, the, and listen, and, and, and the blessing is that when we see ourselves like that, if we fall into that category and we understand, hey, I gotta get back on this thing, I gotta get back in this path, that's the whole shot for us because our hearts have not become hard. Because you remember how we first started out? When we first got submission? Right? All we gotta do is look at where we were. Yeah. Right? 
and where we are now. And I'm not bashing, I'm not knocking, I'm not judging. It's just an understanding that we can look and reflect off of each other, and I can see where you are, I can see where I am, right? And I can try to tighten up and become a better person within myself. Because that's the aim at the end of the day, to try to be the best submitter that you can be within yourself and keeping it real within yourself and keeping it real with us. And then the love will come, the compassion will come, the understanding will come. That's what it's truly about. Because God looks at our heart. You don't look at what we got. If that was the case, a bunch of us would be in the garden. Right? Oh, you got the Benz, you got the Mercedes, you got this, you got that. Into the garden. It don't work like that. This thing is deep. It's deep. So let me wind it down, okay? Because I wanted to read up to 118, but I'm not going to do that. All sovereignty on that day belongs to God, and he will judge among them. As for those who believe, okay, I read that, but I'm going to read it again. As for those who believe and lead a righteous life, they have deserved the garden of bliss. So God is speaking about a reward for what we're doing. There's something that we're going to get. What we're doing has a payoff. Like when you go to the job, you put your hours in, you get paid. God has to pay off for us. It's going to pay off for us. But we got to hold on. It's going to be rough, right? Things ain't going to always go the way we want it to go, right? Our foundation's going to be shaking, right? And we're going to be feeling some kind of way, right? But we got to hold on because it's going to pay off in the long run. And some of us is going to experience the pay off while we're living in this life because God is going to give us that certainty so that we can know, you know what? What God is saying is true. I see it happening in my life. You will see God working. You will see God happening in your life because you'll be happening in your life. You will see the real you. You will no longer be blind. You will no longer be chasing stuff that really is not what you think it is. An awakening will happen and you will blossom like that flower. You will blossom to a higher understanding of who I am, who God is, who people are, and who I am. We will all see each other for who we really are, and you will see you for who you really are. Now what are we going to do about it once God reveals the real you to you, to me? Are we going to persist in our own ways, or are we going to make a change? That's what it's all about. And then Shalom with the sermon on that. Let's come to prayer.